Hi, Tile from Interfidelity here. Today we're going to talk about a headphone that quite took me by surprise. This is the JBL Everest Elite 700 wireless noise canceling self calibrating headphone. It's uh, $299 on the JBL site currently, but as I started to write this review this week, it was down at $224. So um, as I look around at prices today, they kind of went up, but um, there's, it's still available at lower price. So I think you're, you'd be able to get this headphone for under $250 probably pretty regularly. <clears throat> um, this is a kind of an all plastic construction, although it seems to be quite nice materials. The headband pad is kind of a silicon uh, feeling pad. Um, the ear pads are protein leather and they're, they're very um, comfortable. Uh, the, the ear pad opening is, a, um, I would say, a kind of about average, which is generally speaking a little small for people with uh, big ears, unfortunately. Um, and uh, the look of this headphone is, I don't know, I'd, I'd call it okay. It's just, uh, it's got these weird big round things on the end. Of course, the advantage of those is they keep the electronics out here rather than in the ear cup. So I suppose it's easier for engineers to design the acoustics and make it sound better when it's in passive mode, I suppose. Although, well, we'll get to the sound in a little bit. Um, uh, it does come with a cable. The cable is about 50 inches long. Uh, it has a tip ring ring sleeve, a 2.5 millimeter connector on the headphone end and a one button remote. And then on the player end, it's got a uh, 45 degree angle tip ring ring sleeve, 3.5 millimeter plug. And I sure do like these 45 degree angle plugs. The cable is a little I don't know, springy. It kind of keeps its coil memory, but um, generally speaking, I didn't have any problem with the cable. It comes with a USB charging cable, and it also comes with this uh, soft-sided um, fabric clamshell case. And at the under $300 mark, I'd say that was a fairly good accessorization uh, of this headphone. Uh, I found it very comfortable to wear. I think I said that already, but it, it really is a quite a comfortable headphone so that was this, despite its sort of ungainly look that was quite a surprise the uh, electronics on the headphone the the headphone cable enters in the right hand side down here and the charging USB connector is there both sides of the headphone have buttons on it these are three position buttons there's a, a middle button and then two buttons on the end but it's one piece of plastic uh, on this side, on the left hand side, the buttons are for uh, volume up, volume down, pause, play, and of course answer the phone or long push for reject the phone call, double push if you're playing music for track forward, etc, etc. It's a normal set of buttons and pretty much as I would expect. On the right hand earpiece, the top part of this button is used to power the headphone on and off. The um, I, I, there is no middle part of this button and then the bottom part of this button in its standard configuration will turn the awareness mode on and off and the awareness mode in, when the noise canceling is on you can push the awareness mode button once and you'll get a, a voice prompt these are all voice prompts in this headphone you get a voice prompt that the um, awareness mode is low, and which means you'll get a little bit of outside sound. You push it again, it's that awareness mode is high. You'll get more outside sound so you can be more aware of, sur of your surroundings. For example, as you walk around in, in, in traffic and you'll have more situational awareness, or when the uh, flight attendant tells you, would you like peanuts or pretzels, you'll know what she said, she or he said. At any rate, um, this button though there is an app that comes along that you can get with for this headphone and uh, in the app you can program this button to either be the awareness mode on off or the, the noise canceling completely on off so um, that's pretty cool um, also it has a feature called auto off if it doesn't have music or doesn't play any sounds for 10 minutes it will automatically turn off 
Uh, sometimes on an airplane, I like to turn the music off and just, just get the noise canceling. And after 10 minutes, it would turn off in that case. Um, in the app, you can turn this auto off feature off so that it, the headphones will remain on no matter what. Um, the app is a little odd to use. Um, I couldn't get it to run at first on my Android phone and then, uh, or on my iPhone. Um, and then I tried it on my Android phone. I got it to work. Um, I did the firmware upgrade. I went back to my iPhone and turned it on. It still didn't work. And then I realized I needed to have the app uh, running when the phone got paired so that it would recognize the phone was there. And then you have to push the screen. It doesn't say that, but because it says, please connect phone. And then once you connect the phone, you have to tap on the screen to get it to go into the app. It's a, it's a little confusing getting going. There were a lot of complaints on the website. I think a lot of the complaints have been fixed in the firmware versions, but um, it's still a little sensitive to the order that you do things. So I'll forewarn you on that. The app has the ability to turn noise canceling on and off and program this little button down here for whether uh, this little button down here for whether you want it to be the awareness mode or the noise canceling on and off. The app also has a 10 band equalizer in it and when you set the EQ for the headphones the EQ is stored in the headphones so it will then continue to have that EQ as you go from device to device but if you turn on the app in another device even without setting the EQ it will reset the EQ inside so um, there's a little bit of a hitch there, but uh, not really a big deal. Sound quality is surprisingly good. Um, when it's in wired passive mode, the uh, upper mid range and is kind of forward sounding and a little, the headphones are a little hard sounding. Um, the bass is good. Um, not quite strong enough given the strength of the upper mid range. It gets kind of pushed into the background, but it's, it's fairly good uh, and tight. Um, the uh, mid treble from four to eight kilohertz is kind of gone missing in this headphone. And it gives it a um, uh, it, 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 sort of a lack of nuance in the high frequencies in the treble. It, it, it doesn't quite have this smooth, well-resolved um, sound to it. it. It's just a little <clears throat> I, I guess edgier, it's not really edgy, it, it, it's just missing an area. Now if that area was too bright it can be very very annoying so missing that area between 4 and 8k is certainly more preferable than having too much of that area and a lot of uh, headphone makers kind of uh, suppress that area so you don't have a, 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 a harsh and strident sounding headphone and these are not a harsh and strident sounding headphone although they're a bit hard and forward sounding um, at, at any rate it lacks uh, this sense of nuanced resolve because of that missing area but it's quite listenable so um, so in in just wired passive mode it's listenable but the upper range mid range is a, a little too much too forward and and too hard sounding so it, it does have a hard nature to it and um, it's certainly listenable but I prefer listening um, on the wire um, for what it's worth it is better in the in the wired passive mode than the Bose quiet comfort 35 which is quite a bit more uneven sounding than this headphone once you turn the headphone on um, and get into active mode, the first thing you know that you have to you'll have to know to do is that if you do a long push on this uh, smart button here, they call it. If you do a long push on this smart button, it will uh, produce a calibration um, tone, and I could probably I can probably get you to hear that. I'm going to put the the earpiece up to it so you can hear the chirp. So you probably heard that. So what's happening is that chirp is a sort of a frequency response sweep very, very rapidly. And the uh, so the speaker in the headphone, the normal uh, uh, driver in the headphone, puts out this signal. And then the internal uh, feedback microphones and 
after reading the paper by the guy that designed this, there may be more than one, but I, I don't know for sure. I'm going to do some more investigating on this. But the um, there's another microphone inside listens to that tone sweep. And the assumption from what I get from reading the paper is that if the response is correct in the cup outside the ear, then they can assume that the ear pinna will do its job by the time the sound gets to the entrance to the ear canal. So they're, 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 they're EQing the sound inside the cup to be like the sound field of a speaker as, as it's right near your ear. And then they EQ that to be a normal room response, which they take as the Harman room target response. And then they assume the ear will do the rest. So it's not really compensating for the shape of your ear or anything like that, things like that, as much as it is compensating for this acoustic chamber that has your ear in it and then assuming your ear will do its job by the time the sound gets to your actual eardrum itself. At any rate, it does do something. I did measure it. Um, I, I first I clamped it to my legs, to my thigh, ran the sweep so there's no ear in it, and then put it on my head and ran the sweep, and I could hear the difference. It sounded slightly smoother. Um, it's subtle, but it was pretty clear that it did that. And then I did the same thing and then put it on the measurement head, ran a sweep, and then calibrated on the measure head and ran another sweep, and I did see some differences. If you go to the article on inner fidelity, there's some plots there of the frequency response and square wave differences. Again, there are differences, they are subtle, but it does do a good job of matching the both sides to, to your ears, <clears throat> and it did uh, apparently make it sound a little smoother. So the frequency response uh, overall when it's in uh, a wired active mode or in Bluetooth mode are essentially the same. And uh, the, um, I would, the, the forwardness drops back to a more normal region in the upper mid range. So it's fairly well balanced. The bass is boosted a little bit, but also gets a little bit looser sounding. Um, not terribly so, but audibly a little bit looser sounding. But I'd say it has a more, a more balanced relative to the rest of the range. That, that area between 4 and 8K is still kind of gone missing. So it doesn't have the kind of uh, nuanced resolve a, a good uh, passive headphone might have or so. But, but when I compare it to the uh, Bose QuietComfort 35 Active, um, I'd say it comes close. The Bose, I would say, is still preferable, although it having more energy in that 4 to 8K region, and I wouldn't call the Bose excessive there, but I would call it slightly emphatic there. Um, and um, so that region on the Bose is maybe a little more annoying than it is on this headphone where it's missing. However, the Bose has overall a better bass response, better transition into the mid range, maybe just overall a little bit more balanced sound, but, but it's close. This headphone, um, although it gets less hard sounding than when it's passively on the wire, still remains a little strident, not strident, a little hard sounding um, um, and uh, a little forward in the upper mid range, but not not as much as when it's off the wire. So all in all, it's actually pretty good. When I compared it to the Sennheiser Momentum wireless headphone, I thought this one was actually quite a bit superior. The Sennheiser Momentum wireless was, was quite a bit harder sounding. So um, this is close. Um, all in all, I'd say this is a pretty darn good headphone for 249. Um, I'm going to put it up on the Wall of Fame. The the um, the trick here on the Wall of Fame is, is that I'm getting a lot of wireless headphones that are going to be coming in, and I think a lot of these headphones aren't going to survive on the wall very long. Um, still, um, this headphone at this price is going to be tough to beat, I think. There's a lot going on that's good in terms of having an EQ that you can carry with you and calibrating to your ears, um, having the ability to uh, hear a bit of little uh, ambient noise when you want to, or, yeah, ambient sounds when you want to. Um, I'd say this is a pretty fully featured, well thought out package. Uh, and um, um, pretty happy to see J -E JBL um, kind of entering the fray in a powerful way with this headphone. Uh, I will soon be um, reviewing the AKG N90Q, which is like the big daddy of this headphone, 
also has the self calibrating modes and so on and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that one fares at any rate the jbl everest elite 700 wireless headphone uh, noise canceling ambient aware self calibrating um, is good and hope you get a chance to listen one soon this is certainly one if you want to a, a nice relatively low cost traveling headphone that's not offensive and um, you're not going to drop a lot of coin on um, this is a good buy so hope you get a chance to hear one soon and we'll see you guys the next time